Hi everybody, Brian Norcross here with a Thursday afternoon update on what's going on with this tropical disturbance we've been following that's been moving through and across the Caribbean islands. Here you see the estimated location uh, by the National Hurricane Center right over the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic over those very tall mountains there. Uh, this is now designated Invest 97L. All that designation means, which if you're following it, I know you've heard, is that internally the National Hurricane Center is running their full suite of computer forecast models to try and produce the best forecast after this thing gets developed. Those forecast models really don't help us much right now, but they do help us once the system gets developed. They're some of the most advanced uh, uh, forecasting tools that we have. All right, so there's what we're seeing right now. And if you notice, we're seeing some curvature here in these bands. Here, we're not so much on the southern side, but you can kind of make out some curvature here. And when we start to see curvature, we're saying, okay, now the weather pattern is somewhat conducive for a strengthening. And if we look closely, we can make out some wispy clouds kind of going that way. And that's a sign in the upper levels of the atmosphere that indeed a conducive atmospheric pattern, conducive for organization and strengthening, uh, is over top of the system. Now, is it absolutely going to stay there all the way to the Gulf of Mexico? It turns out it's kind of in a little sliver of conducivity at this point, so uh, we'll see. But in any case, as of right now, the atmosphere is getting more conducive for development. And when we look at this, we see two things happening. One is we see this curvature I was talking about. The other is when I add the enhancement to it, we see that the tall thunderstorms, which are the brighter orange, uh, were up here, and now they're forming down here. Now, that might just be because of the way the wind flow is interacting with the mountains here on the Tiburon Peninsula in Haiti, or it might be that a sign that the center is more likely to end up farther south here than, than in the middle or farther north. Anyway, we have this significant uncertainty uh, since the center is all disrupted over those mountains right now, and that X is just sort of a nominal estimated center where it's going to emerge uh, on the other side. So we're going to keep that in mind as we look forward in time that we need to think about it being plus or minus uh, the center line of going down Cuba. Okay, so here's where we stand with this Invest 97L, the estimated uh, top wind somewhere in that uh, system down there, 30 miles an hour. There you see the pressure estimated uh, will have a, or may have a Hurricane Hunter uh, plane go uh, check it out here pretty quickly. So we'll see, not when it's over the land, but once it gets back out over the water, 70% chance that this is going to develop according to the Hurricane Center in the next seven days. Uh, if that's going to happen, it's going to be late on, late on, uh, early on Saturday, I think, would be the earliest, uh, more likely late Saturday into maybe Tuesday. Somewhere in that time frame seems like the most uh, likely time right now. There's the area where if it does develop, uh, it's expected that that development will take place. 70% chance in there. You see that includes down here in the water's around Cuba and conceivably even over uh, Cuba. If it's a big enough circulation, sometimes you can actually get a depression form over the land. That's obviously less likely. Most likely is in this area here to the west of Florida and north of Cuba. So it's going to take until about Saturday before it emerges there, depending on exactly what path it takes. But as you'll see in a moment, not all the computer forecasts take it right over Cuba. Some take it down here to the south, and some take it a little bit farther to the north. So uh, just the Hurricane Center is keeping that in mind in case it takes one of those side tracks here and, and doesn't go kind of straight ahead. There's also very, very warm water, extremely warm water, up near 90 degrees once it, it clears Cuba here. So it's got all the fuel it needs to to um, explosively intensify. Does it have the atmospheric pattern to do that? And does it have the structure to do that? Those are the two unknowns. Many of the computer forecast models show a quite conducive atmospheric structure, but it is going to be disrupted when it uh, leaves the mountains there of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and then it runs into Cuba to some degree. So exactly how disrupted 
uh, is an open question. And when a system is disrupted, it just takes some time to get back together before it can intensify. And how much time is it going to have? Because there isn't, if it, if it continues on its path to the north, let's say it goes over Cuba and it goes something like this. Let's just uh, imagine if it, if it moves apace, then it doesn't have a lot of time over the Gulf. But we've all seen storms intensify quickly over the Gulf of Mexico. So we're just going to keep that possibility in mind. Here's what the computer models show through five days. And I want you to notice here where the GFS is in five days. I'm going to leave that circle on there. And uh, not all the models go beyond five days. So this is not all an apples and apples comparison. But what I want you to notice is that uh, this is the UK MET model, swings well south of Cuba. So intensification can indeed begin down here. And then just a little part of Cuba, the same part that Ian went over, actually, and then moves to the north. Then the, the uh, GFS, uh, the two GFS-based uh, uh, models here, kind of go over a lot of Cuba and then stay very close to Florida. So they're going to have a harder time intensifying because there's more interaction with land and uh, other models are in, the, this is the HWARF model, which we don't really pay much attention to until the system develops. But when we look at the consensus, which also includes the European, well, first of all, what I want to do is I want to show you, I want to stretch this out to seven days because I want everybody in the Carolinas to pay attention to this. Watch up here as I go to the seven days. Remember where it was at five days and notice it's only here at seven days. So what's happening there is according to the GFS, the steering currents kind of collapse and it ends up stalling up here. Now, yesterday, the thinking was it was going to stall over here. So we're just going to keep our mind open to the idea that this might slow down, stall, loop. Look at it zigging and zagging around up here because it doesn't have anything to really push it along. Uh, that's uh, indeed, it continues to be a possibility. And where that might happen, uh, we just don't know. The consensus model, which we normally look at, but it the consensus, because the system doesn't really have a center yet, is less important right now. But you notice it's right down the middle of the potential development area with the idea it could be on either side. And then up in here, it just becomes an open question because we don't have a lot of models uh, to look at it seven days out. OK, here's what we're going to uh, let's track this now with the moisture, because this will give you an idea when it arrives in the vicinity of uh, Florida. The dark greens are the... Uh, the denser tropical moisture, tropical downpours uh, embedded in that. Obviously, land interaction is de delaying uh, development right now. It looks like that this thing would be spinning up right now if it wasn't for those tall mountains there in the Caribbean. All right, then moving through today into tomorrow, here's where you look and see where the day is up here. And you can see that there's more of a kink here in the flow. So it's trying to wrap up. This is the GFS model now. And remember, the GFS model takes it right over the uh, uh, high terrain of eastern Cuba. Remember also that the UK MET model took it down here, said, OK, it's going to be a little farther south, maybe develop down in here somewhere, come this way. So it's over the water already. So we we'll just, uh, again, every time you see the X somewhere, I think maybe it's a little north, maybe it's a little south, and how might that change it? But what this is telling you is that the atmospheric pattern is conducive for organization when we start to see that kind of a kink and trying to wrap up. So that's tomorrow. Now again, let's move a day ahead and let's look to Saturday. Here comes the moisture. Notice it arrives in uh, South Florida, the southern part of the peninsula by early on Saturday, maybe late Friday night, and it's dark green. Dark green means rounds of uh, potentially heavy rain. And this uh, invest now moving into the Gulf of Mexico, now you see even more uh, kind of circular shape to the winds, whether it's completely all the way around is an open question. But the point is, moves into the Gulf of Mexico, much more conducive environment, very, very warm waters. So we have the potential by Saturday to have a tropical depression here 
as it leaves Cuba if that doesn't happen uh, somehow uh, before that. And then we have the question of what's going to happen up in here with that very warm water. Remember, the X could be over here just as well. So anywhere up in here, very warm water, uh, conducive atmosphere. Somewhere in here is the thinking that it will travel. Whether it travels slowly and then stalls, that's an open question. And then we, we want everybody up here, Georgia and the Carolinas, to know that you're in it next week uh, in some fashion. Maybe it's inland. Maybe it's right along the coast. Maybe it's a strong storm. Maybe there are significant impacts. Maybe it's just rain. Uh, but you can see that already here on Saturday, the rain will be moving up that way, pulled north by the jet stream. So... This is going to be a pretty long duration rain event, I think, for a good part of the southeast, not just Florida. So what's going on with the steering? Here's the deal. What we have is this dip in the jet stream here. This dip in the jet stream is what's pulling this north. So the dip, the dip in the jet stream is low pressure, and it's pushed the high pressure systems away. The heat dome high over the west, the Bermuda high over the Atlantic. So we have this gap, and that's what it's moving north through. Now, the question is, what's going to happen to this dip? Some of the computer forecasts hold the dip in here, and that takes the system somehow up this way, and it just kind of continues and gets pulled there. Other forecasts take the dip and then kind of move it away. It just kind of leaves the scene, and so the system gets somewhere, and then it stalls and moves and, and uh, whatever before this high can build back in, and then finally takes it somewhere out to sea maybe or up the coast or something different happens there. So uh, it, it, it's really related to exactly how much this dip can grab it uh, on how fast it goes north and how far it goes north or northeast. So that's, you know, that's what we're watching for, that kind of interaction. And that depends on how quickly it gets strong. So normally, the stronger the system gets, the more the jet stream can grab it. That's because stronger systems are taller in the atmosphere. The jet stream is up in the atmosphere, has more of something to grab onto and pulls it uh, faster. So if it gets stronger sooner, that's not good, obviously. We don't want a strong system, but it's more likely to move. If it stays weaker longer, then this upper-level low can exit the scene, and upper-level dip in the jet stream, which is low pressure, can exit the scene, and then the steering can collapse and, and other things can happen. It can get kind of balanced around between those high-pressure systems. So that's what we're going to be watching for. We're just going to have to see uh, what happens and it's probably going to be late on Friday to early on Saturday before we can actually see how much this thing is coming together. So there's a good chance that Debbie is going to form. I'm not saying it's absolutely going to happen, but I think it looks more likely than not. It looks like this could be a long duration event for not just Florida, but parts of the southeast. The rain will begin uh, by Saturday and then continue for many areas uh, for some days, I think, could be uh, rain will be likely and tropical moisture, so meaning heavy downpours. Yes, a hurricane is possible. Uh, we're not forecasting any particular intensity yet. We just don't know, but certainly a hurricane is possible in those uh, in the weather, uh, under the weather pattern that's forecast in the eastern Gulf over that warm water, and just be ready for this waves of tropical downpours. It's not going to be one uh, like, like uh, dousing coming through, expect it to come uh, in waves. But again, we don't have a good handle on exactly all that's going to happen and exactly where. But Florida, southeast coast, uh, Gulf Coast, especially Alabama to the east, I would say would be the uh, prime locations for a potential threat uh, at this time. All right, uh, have a good Thursday night. Of course, we'll be with you on Fox Weather. Uh, and by the way, if you, you don't know how to get Fox Weather, we're talking about this nonstop, and it's a 24-hour free uh, weather channel. So I'm going to put this up for you so you can scan it on your phone or just type foxweather.tv into your uh, browser on your phone or on your computer, and it'll tell you all the different ways that you can get uh, free anytime uh, Fox weather 
uh, available to you on your phone, on your TV, on your Roku, your Samsung TV, your LG TV, uh, and also on many cable systems uh, as well. Most uh, cable systems uh, carry us as well. So have a good Thursday night, and um, we'll uh, see you here tomorrow and keep you up to date on Fox Weather as well. Take care.